Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Minding Your Mechs, episode 14. Today we are testing the TVL 2700 mods in copper, brass, and stainless steel. And let's go ahead and get these ready for testing. Okay, I used grip tape on these, so it makes it easier to uh, use consistent pressure on the button from uh, going from one mod to the other. It's your usual setup. We're going to monitor the voltage drop over here. Cosmonaut, RDA, and I'm monitoring the voltage through these low current leads. And then the 30 amps, every single time, 30 amps that come from this power supply being drawn by this electronic loads. So no matter what the differences are between the mods, I'm always drawing 30 amps. Very consistent. We don't have to worry about battery voltage drop, battery condition, or anything like that. Eliminates a lot of variables. And let's get started. Going to start with stainless steel first. Using a solid aluminum 2700 slug for now, then we'll go 18650. This has uh, about one third of one thousandth of a volt drop at 30 amps. I use this because we're just going to measure the voltage across the terminals here and then subtract the effect of the battery, uh, uh, subtract the effect of the RDA in terms of voltage drop, and we're left only with the voltage drop of the mech. Okay, do a quick test here, and we're good. Okay, and what I do now is I fire, I close the contacts, or press the button, and then I fire a two-second pulse through here, and what that does is prevent any arcing damage from occurring, which might affect my results, especially if I want to retest anything like that. I'll be doing arcing testing and its effect on uh, overall resistance and conductivity at some later time, but right now, it just provides more consistency because there's no arcing damage building up during the test. And press 0 0.30, 0 0.30 volts, excuse me, 0.43, hand slipped, 0.28, 0.29, Point three. I'm going to call it point two eight volts. And let's move on to the next metal. We're going to move on to brass. was 46 millivolts, so 0 0.046, about eight times or so, seven, eight times uh, better than stainless steel. 0 0.042, or 42 millivolts. 0 0.047, 0 0.0, I'm not quite sure. 0 0.035, 0 0.040. I'm going to take something in the middle, 0 0.039. That's pretty good. All right, let's go to uh, copper. Which I'd expect to be a little bit better than brass, but not an awful lot. Assuming everything else is the same, the threads, etc. All these Next, we're cleaned by uh, soapy water and toothbrush, uh, water rinse, then a half hour each with never dull, scrubbing deep, deep, deep into the threads, and then a soapy water toothbrush rinse, then an alcohol dip, and then a blow dryer to quickly dry it off. They cannot be cleaner than this. Okay, that looks good. And we're ready to off the voltage over here. Oh, 0 0.05. That's all over the place. About 0 0.07. 0 0.08. 0 0.08. Much more variation in the copper one than I was getting with the other ones, but they all use a copper contact. 0 0.07. Let's, uh, maybe there's a high spot, so let's 
take this down a bit. There we go. That was for a little bit there. I don't know, 0 0.08. 0 0.08, 0 0.09, 0 0.1, there we go, 0.05, I moved my finger to a different spot, 0 0.06, 0 0.07, I'm going to give a 0 0.06, but it's dependent on where my finger is more than the other ones, I don't know if that is typical of all of them, or if it's just this one. What I'm going to do is reconnect it. Because I would expect it to be somewhere down below the 0.039 we got for brass, somewhere in like the 0 .2, 0 0.027 or so, which is typical for the good copper max so far. 0 .05. 0.05. Point oh six. I'm pressing very hard. It's hard to do to try to get a consistent. It's very inconsistent. See, there is point two two volts. You know, eight times higher. Okay, I'm going to stay with point oh six because that's the best we can get. But this is actually quite inconsistent compared to the other two. I don't know again if that's. Uh, for all of them or just for this one. I don't have any other copper ones to compare. And let's do a quick check. Actually, I was going to compare with uh, using the copper one to compare the 18650 to the 2700, but because of the inconsistency of the copper and how consistent the brass was, I'm going to use that. We got 0.039 and we're going to use their adapter on a solid aluminum slug. in the brass, we got a 0.039 with the 2700. Let's see if we pay a penalty or much of one using the 18650 adapter. It gets a lot more inconsistent. 0.036, inconsistent. We'll try a different finger. There we go, 0 0.04, 0 0.033, 0 0.035. I'm pressing harder than I was before, the 0 0.06. Actually, I'm getting some inconsistency across the button. Yeah, like over here, it's 0 0.05, 0 0.07. All right, so there is some inconsistency here. I'm not sure how to judge this then, but it didn't look like there was really any effect because uh, I was still getting numbers down uh, uh, near the 0 0.039 that I was getting uh, with the 2700. So I'm going to say there's no difference in uh, the voltage drop that we can measure having any kind of effect between the 18650 adapter and not. And, and I would expect that because that's what I see with the other mechs and their adapters. It's sets a small piece of metal, just isn't a lot of resistance, and it's copper too. Even if it was stainless steel though, there'd be a very small drop. Let me go back and just throw the stainless steel on, see if uh, I got lucky with how consistent it was. If I move around the button presses a little bit, because it kind of bothers me. Uh, consistent results are always going to be better. If it's inconsistent, you never know which is the quote correct one. Point two five. Let's see. Before we got point two eight, point two seven. Moving my finger over to the side. Well, point two seven. Then we get to a different side. Point five one. But I wasn't pressing very hard. Let's try a totally different approach. Point two seven. Okay, so that's pretty well stayed the same. <sighs> let's try copper again. It's frustrating. All three have copper contacts. All three were clean the same way. OK, 
Okay, I'm going to use this finger here, a nice fresh finger. 0 0.055. 0 0.053, 0 0.05, 0 0.07, oops, 0 0.08, I'm shifting my finger a little bit, it's not even pressing, there we go, see that wasn't even recording my press there, 0.06, Ah, oh, that's a lot of hard pressing. All right, so this I'm going to stay at 0.06. It's just uh, the button a couple times didn't even connect. And uh, now that could be due to the size or um, this here. So I wouldn't pay any attention to that in terms of sizing this or connecting with this. It's really the inconsistency a little bit that bothers me on this. But I got a 0.06 on here. And typically I would expect something down about half that, 0.03 or less. And let's try setting up, well, actually, let's do set up for the arcing test. Okay, monitor the current. What I have here are two 0.2 ohm resistors in parallel for 0.1 ohm. And Cosmonaut again, I will use, uh, for the arcing test, I'll use the all copper one. Even though it's a little inconsistent, I want to... Actually, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to use the brass because it was consistent because they all have the copper contact. And uh, I'm just checking the arcing damage between this and the bottom of the cell. In my case, the uh, load... Excuse me, not the load, the uh, dummy, the slug. Put this over here. Huh. Works better though if I use a real battery. BTC 5A. That's what I get for not doing a mech test in a while. Okay, and we will double check that we've got a good amount of current flowing here. 33 amps, 33.2, 33.1 amps, that's good. Now, what I do with this is I fire 300 times and then I take it apart and I look at how much damage there is, if any, and I will not subject, uh, subject you to 300 presses. I will uh, cut that out and we'll start. One, two, three, 297, 298, 299, 300. <laughs> wow. Okay, and let's take a peek. And we can see that there are some black dots there and some arcing marks. And I uh, can't, can't, can't quite tell as easily on this. Oh, now I see it. Yeah, there's a, an arc of that. But I'm going to check with the loop, and I'll be right back. Nice seven power loop. Yeah, there's a bunch of arcing. It's not severe. It's, there's a lot of it, excuse me, not deep arc marks, but uh, there are quite a few of them, which is expected. There's flat contacts. Yeah, and also for the copper contact here. So moderate arcing damage, it's something that uh, you want to address daily, and you can use something like uh, these Scotch-Brite pads are fantastic for it, the heavy-duty ones. I've seen them use the number 288 on Amazon where I got these, but these are tougher than the regular you know, green and yellow uh, dishwashing scrubber pads. These are quote heavy duty ones. I've seen them in all kinds of different packaging. So the different varieties, depending on what country they come from, etc. But these are good for light damage like this. Be careful though on plated contacts because you don't want to keep abrading those till you run through it. And these performed well enough and I didn't feel any kind of hot spots or anything like that. So I'm not going to do thermal testing because that'll just waste everyone time while we sit there, you know, waiting for one minute for these to heat up. And I will put up the table of the results. Okay, for stainless steel, we had a 0.28 volt drop. That's about average. For brass, we had a 0.039. 
Uh, but for copper, we had 0 0.06, and it was a lot more variable, depending on where you put your finger. Uh, the other ones, I could do that, but the, the copper ones seemed to be a little more sensitive to finger, presses, uh, finger press location than the others. And that 0.06 is 50% uh, higher than the brass. And that's it for the TVL 2700 mods. Thank you for watching.